tough night for the Twins for the second night in a row against the Orioles. And tough night in the organization altogether as every single affiliate that played lost. So we're going to look forward to the finale of the Orioles series and the Tigers coming up. This is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins, your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to Locked On Twins. I'm your host, Brandon Warren, and you can unfollow me on the tweets at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E, which seems to be a popular theme lately, but for you to figure out what that means, go check it out yourself. And Mr. Dave Brown is joining me. you got to go follow him at Answer Dave Brown. We're getting closer to 1,000, I think, but I haven't checked. Dave, what's up? Oh, follower numbers don't uh, concern me, Brandon. It's all about the quality of the interactions. It's uh, height doesn't measure heart or something like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, though, for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Also, on YouTube. Hi, YouTube. We're uh, happy to see you. We're glad you're here. And, um, you know, even though things did not go great for the local nine in this one, or again, like I said, the affiliates. The only affiliates that didn't lose tonight, Dave Brown, was Cedar Rapids. And uh, they got rained out. So, one of those nights, but again, uh, as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, Locked On Twins is your team every day. It's the Twins every day. Apologies for missing yesterday because I was dealing still with a bit of a cough, and um, I'm, not, I'm not ducking the Twins losing because we're here tonight, so I think that that, that much is up. Walking. Uh, it reminds me of the old Aflac commercials with uh, Yogi Berra. Do you remember those? Yeah, and with Gilbert Godfrey, God rest their souls. Is... Boy, can you imagine that conversation going on up in heaven? Whew. That's Abbott and Costello, but like, ugh. It'd, be, it'd be entertaining and frustrating at the same time. I don't even know how I would handle that conversation, but it'd be hysterical for sure. It's kind of like listening to us, I think. Probably. Uh, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel, by the way. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Dave, wins, not good. No bueno. I think Eleven. Cedar Rapids had the right idea by not playing today. Yep, and I, if the, I think you're right. The Twins could have figured out how to do that. I don't know if it would have required some kind of subterfuge like in Bull Durham where they wet the field. They flood it. Some kind, you know, as Sun Tzu said, if you can't beat the Orioles, don't even bother trying. Well, I think it's fair to say the Twins wet the field tonight. It just wasn't in the way you. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean that. Well, but yeah, they were not good. Speaking of wet the field, if the if the game had been scheduled for here, it would have been postponed. It's been raining all day in the Twin Cities. I think we've gotten somewhere between two two and a half inches of rain, which is. Uh, richly needed we've had droughts the last couple years so not that that's going to make up for that not that anybody cares about that but uh oh twins, i'm sure the farmers do kyle farmer might uh 11 3 twins fall 7 4 in the opener we didn't cover that yet either let's just get out in front of this this orioles team is really really good like really good let's just They're get out in front of the bus yep as it and runs then, us over that's the Orioles for you. It wouldn't have been a good time. It's not a good time for the Twins. Uh, they're, you know, everybody knows they're not a full strength. No Correa and etc. You go on down the line. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's when you combine it with the, the Orioles after uh, a couple of uh, whatever so so weeks, really starting to get the lineup going fully. Uh, and it's you know they're homegrown guys. They're, they're guys that got off waivers. Guys that they got off the street. You know Ryan O'Hearn, in addition to the the Gunnar Hendersons of the world, uh, Sandra there was a, a guy like that too. A Rule Five, I think. So yep. uh, every which way they've uh, added players to the team, or you know, uh, a guy like O'Hearn was uh, the Royals thought highly of him. They just could never uh, get him to hit, and yep. uh, at least uh, most of the time, the, the Orioles seem to have solved that, and he's in the middle of their lineup. So it's uh, they're doing a lot of things right right now. 
and it's a, it's not a good time. It's not a good time to play the Orioles. The, the Twins have allowed 18 runs in two games. A couple of kind of downer pitching performances. Just uh, Scott Paddock. Um, <laughs> Scott Paddock was my high school football teammate. I've mentioned him before. Maybe it was him pitching. Maybe it was him pitching. That they said. We replaced Chris Paddock with Scott Paddock. Let's see if anyone notices. And let me he tell you. He was a good center on the freshman the Orioles, football team. So the he Orioles was an athlete. Noticed. The Orioles offense noticed. I'm just going to I'm gonna keep referring him to That's uh, fine. Scott Paddock. Um, I, you know, who's uh, sort of like that that question we had for each other the other day. Who Was, was Farmer's era worse or was Austin Martin's? Was Paddock's performance worse or Louis Varland's? I'm going to say. I don't know. Uh, you know, they both seem to give up a lot of two strike hits, which was probably the most alarming disappointing yep. commonality of the, the two performances of each performance that it was, uh, you know, they were getting in position to get outs. They were getting ahead of batters, but then they, they didn't have a put away pitch or they just had a really bad pitch on, on, the, on the next effort. And the Orioles made them pay both nights. It was not, a good night for twins starting pitching for sure. Yeah. Gunnarsson, Hen Gunnarsson, Hender, Gunners Henderson, easy for me to say, uh, singles on an O2 curve ball. That's just right down the middle. And that kind of set the tone for the whole night. I think you make a good point there. O2 pitches, O2 giving up, getting all O2 hits as a hitter. will get you to heaven, but I don't know what a super pitcher. I don't really want to say what the opposite of that is. You know, I want, I want to give the, I mean, I don't care really. I mean, I give the Orioles credit for good two strike hitting, but I don't know. It wasn't like it was three. The count was three and two and they were, you know, it was a 10 pitch at bat. It was like the third or fourth pitch of the at bat after they had fallen behind 0 and two. That should be, that should be heavily pitcher advantaged and the twins just couldn't make it happen. And you wonder, you know, I think people are, kind of like how they were with Matt Walner ready to see a different pitcher other than Louie yep. out there for his next start. He'll probably, I would imagine he'll get another start, but beyond that, he's going to have to show a little bit more for me. You know, they have Simeon Woods Richardson who looks like he knows what he's doing. Looks like he's a little ahead of the game. He doesn't throw as hard as Louie, but he's got some other things going for him that are maybe a little more advanced. And uh, I think, if Louie doesn't show uh, an improvement in his next start, I think the one after that is going to be SWR. Yeah, I wish Louis C.K. hadn't been such a scumbag because playing Louis, Louis, Louis as he walks off the mound after a strikeout would be kind of cool, don't you think? We could still do that. We just we we would ignore the Louis C.K. part. Yep, and just you know go skip right to Louis Garland, but. Well, you know, he's he needs to pitch better to have any kind of songs played other than yeah. hit the road jack. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. We'll come back to Louie because I got some more questions about him. But before we go into our first break, how much does it matter to you or how much credit slash whatever do you give Chris Paddock for soaking up some innings tonight? Because he still threw 89 pitches, pitched into the sixth, but the numbers will make you cry into your Olipop like I'm drinking right now. Uh, nine yeah. earned, 12 hits. I believe they said he had 11 batted balls over 100 miles per hour. I think Dan Hayes, the esteemed Dan Hayes of The Athletic, had uh, tweeted that, and eight of them were hits. So along, along those lines, let me while I remember, uh, average exit velocity on his four-seam fastball, I threw 37 four-seamers. This is according to StatCast. Yep. 99.5 miles an hour average exit velocity on uh, – 12 curveballs, uh, he average exit velocity 98.4 miles an hour. So mm -hmm. when you are throwing the fastball and the curveball and they're hitting it about the same really high speed, uh, you're not having a good night. So he's got some some tweaking to do and maybe some twerking. Maybe mm -hmm. it, it gets down to that as well, something with the booty. Don't uh, rule anything out. Yeah. So. Uh not a good sign when you have six swinging strikes and your number one pitch for swinging strikes is a four-seam fastball with three. Um, each of the pitches that he threw more than once tonight, so four-seam fastball, change of curveball slider, right. had a max exit velo 
of over 100 miles per hour. So every single he, – it was like he was hitting the pitch com and it was going directly to the batting helmet instead of the catching helmet or whatever. You know so what I do mean? So do we give him any credit for – no, not really for for sticking it out. I mean, that's that's what the the situation called for. The last yep. two nights, Rocco and uh, Pete Mackey, obviously looking ahead and not wasting too many relief pitchers, uh, or do, you know, kind of trying to minimize that damage as much as possible. Uh, you know, last night Farland got into the fifth or sixth or whatever, and um, so it, it, you know it, that's. They they don't want to ruin some other game down the road, yeah. Uh, so I, I give I don't know I give uh, the pitching staff credit for um, minimizing that damage as much as they could. They still they still have another game in the series, and and hopefully they'll the fresher arms that are available Wednesday will will pay off with a victory. Do you ever think about the spoonerism for Pete Mackey? Meet Packy. That's it's uh, kind of hard. that's. Uh, I don't think about it too much. Okay, well, I do. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll talk about, uh, I guess, a lot more twin stuff because it's been pretty rough. <laughs> you can talk about the White Sox. No, no they're coming uh, coming to Minnesota soon, aren't mm. they? Or is it the other way around? No, they're coming to Minnesota. Yeah, they've already, you've already, the twins have already been to the White Sox. That's right. All right. Uh, let's take a quick pause. When we come back, uh, we will have lots more about the twins. Feel like such a downer when I'm doing that, but hey, <laughs> if you want a chance to win some money, Prize Picks is the place to go. It's North America's largest daily fantasy sports platform. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. So instead of battling thousands of other players who might be using their own little algorithm or entering a whole bunch of different uh, entries into one contest. It's just you picking more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watching the winnings roll in. It's super duper easy. Highly recommend it. The app has a fun new feature called Demons and Goblins. Demons are those picks that are in red. They're a little trickier. They're a little scarier, but you can win big money, like 100 times your money. So if you put in a buck, you get 100 if you're right, or 10, it's 1,000. So again, simple math. I was told there'd be no math. I'm doing my best here. But if you're cautious, you can always choose a goblin pick. I've always thought of the goblin as kind of a, a bad thing too. But in this case, goblin is green and it means that it's going to keep you in the green. It's going to keep you landing and winning that green with consistent victories. The payout is less than a demon pick, but again, your chances of keeping that winning streak going much higher. So if you're into the NBA, you can pick more than or less than on the playoff games that are happening right now. We had play in tournament games this evening and for spring training ball, you can spring training ball. What am I talking about? Spring training ball is over. Uh, for regular season ball, uh, more than or less down on pitcher strikeouts, first inning runs, all that fun stuff. Download the app today and enter code Locked On MLB, and you will get a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Again, that's code Locked On MLB, all one word, all lowercase, and get your first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Join Prize Picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And we also have new friends over at Monopoly Go. And uh, it's a it's a really really great and fun mobile game that you should be trying at trying out. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, we've all been there though, either as a player or as a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard's not looking good. Well, for the Twins, it was pretty early in this one. But if you're feeling low, not sure if you or your team can come back and pull out a win, you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, "It's time to get back into the game. Pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friends' money as I possibly can." Well, maybe not when you're watching the Twins, but the, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go will let you do that. It lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and build the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone, anytime with a bunch of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. And there's so much you can do. You can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards, make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. I think that sounds great. And charge other players rent for your iconic properties you can even work with your friends to crack open community chests in tournaments you can get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard so get back out there put on your game face and download monopoly go free on the app store or on google play all right dave we are into our uh bullpen our second segment and um you know 
it was ugly. It, you can't really dance around the fact that uh, it has has not been pretty for the Twins. Uh, Louis Varland obviously not going as uh, deep or as effective as you'd hope. And get this, so 14 innings this season. In each of his three big league seasons, his homer rate has jumped. It was 1.38 in his rookie campaign of 2022. That is already pretty dicey. 212 last year, 3.21 right now. So what that comes out to is five homers allowed, which is the same number of walks he has. Uh, He's got more than a strikeout per inning. The walk rate is the walk rate, whatever. He's thrown 108 big league innings and is giving up homers at a rate of 2.08 per nine. Can we pretty confidently say that this guy should probably be a reliever? You're muted. Why didn't you notice before? I tried to unmute you myself. That's why. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Louis Varlin. I think he might be a reliever, Dave. <laughs> the problem with that is, as I was saying before, you reminded me that no one could understand me, and not for the usual reasons. Yeah. It was because um, when you give up home runs as a reliever in high leverage situations, that's a no good either. Yeah. That's not. That's going to lose you some games as well. So what are we saying that Louis is a, you know a. a a guy that you bring in when you're losing Louie, the loser. No, I, I don't, I don't know about that, but um, I, I think there's things that they need to uh, work on with Louie that lower that home run rate, no matter if he's pitching five innings or six or the sixth or seventh inning. So um, th- there are still things when you, when you throw as, as hard as he does and you can get ahead of guys. Oh, and two, there's a way to get around the home runs. You don't need to give up the home runs. You know, you don't need to pour that third or fourth pitch over the, the middle of the plate. And that's yeah. unfortunately what he's been doing lately. They need to, uh, you know, he, he needs to be a little, I don't know if it's a little less aggressive, but, you know, maybe try and hit a corner or something once in a while, uh, you know, make an out pitch out of it. You know, the defense again yesterday, it wasn't really the case today. But in the Varlin start, he was not helped out by the defense. There was a double play that could have been had. But, you know, in the wake of that, there were two or three times when he would get ahead of the other, get ahead of the Orioles hitters and still give up big hits, home runs or, or whatever it was. So these are things that he definitely can work on. And I mean, he's not pitching as well as he did last year in relief. You know, last year, at least in relief, he was very solid. He was one of their yeah. better relief pitchers. He's not even doing that right now. So I, I don't know. I, I, maybe does he need to reset down in mini in uh, in St. Paul? Possibly. Do you switch him out with uh, Simeon Woods Richardson? Maybe. I, I think you one. You've got to get him in the rotation, mm-hmm. and uh, Paddock probably needs more time. And you, you figure he's got more tools to work with at, at a major league level. But as, as far as Louie goes, maybe he should be switched out. Counterpoint to that is Griffin Jacks. 2021, 2.52 homers per nine in 18 games, 14 starts. 0.87 homers per nine, 0.69 homers per nine, which is nice. And then none so far this year in six and two-thirds innings. So m- maybe there's something there that Jacks did. I'm assuming what Jacks did and what I would probably have, Pad- uh, not Paddock, Varlin do, is pare down the the repertoire. You know, yeah. in, in four pitches, you go to three or two, even two uh, with jacks. It's a heater and then a, a nasty sweeper. I don't know what that looks like for Louis Varland, and I don't know if that is a possibility, but I think that's what I would probably do. But with that said, as we've said all off season long and, and even into the season, bullpen is a strength for this team right now. You don't need to decide what Louis Varlin's future is right now. You can send him to St. Paul, his hometown, I might add, and uh, let him pitch through some things, see what happens. And the only thing I ask and, the, and I wonder about, and the same thing is, I guess, true for Paddock, 
if you let Varlin keep going, how much then do you take into account that his next two starts are probably going to be against the White Sox or maybe I think the Angels are in there, but wouldn't be against the Tigers in this upcoming series. So uh, you'd have to be careful about making too many bold proclamations in one direction now or the other direction later if you let, for instance, well, you are going to let Paddock make those starts, but if Varland has two good starts against the White Sox, and again, I think the Twins would be aware of that, obviously, but I think fans would maybe sway back a little bit in the other direction. So basically what I'm seeing is uh, I'm frustrated by this run of play, especially the offense, and we'll talk about that in our final segment, but um, I don't want to overreact, but I also don't want to underreact to early season stuff, with, uh, especially with how Varland pitched uh, last night. Well, you know, if circumstances had been different with, say, with Walner, if the, if Larnick had been available, if other people hadn't gotten hurt early, um, I, I wonder how much they, they would have looked at his spring training as kind of a sign of things to come rather than yeah. something that we can write off. Um, you know, I, I think uh, confidence was a big thing with Walner, and I, I think the Twins thought – that well, if we just we show him some love and some confidence, spring training stuff will be forgotten. Well, with Varland, he started out really well in spring training, but his last two or three outings were kind of in the toilet, and yeah. sort of how they've gone so far in in the regular season. Um, you know, I, and I don't think anybody. There might be one or two people out there who think that they. We're, we're too quick to send Walner down to the minors. Yeah. To I me. It, one. Yeah. One, one, one view of someone whose views I respect said that. And I was like, yes. Mm, and I, I totally, uh, I, I like to think that way too. I like to give people more run than two weeks or 10 days. Um, but, you know, if you look at consistent at bats and, you know, you pointed out how he wasn't catching up to 95 mile on our fastballs. And I know the point that was that we were talking about, Varland, but no, no, um, it's good. It's good. It, it's um, you know, if you if you if you do take into account spring training, Varland's struggles have been going on longer than two or three starts, uh, yeah. and and just like they had been with with Walner's at bats. So I think it it um, the, the White Sox thing. I I haven't looked. You know, if, if he's got at least one start against them it might be worth it to try and exploit that because that's like a, a legendarily bad, you know, historically bad offense right now. So that might give him uh, a, a break to, to see, you know, on the major league level at the same time, it's not like things are, are times growing short, but I also think it's pretty clear that Simeon Woods Richardson should get another start sooner rather than later. So if they did make a change even before Gar uh, Varland was going against the White Sox, I think that would be either the right move or certainly a fair move. No, it looks like Varland's going to start the finale on Sunday against the Tigers if it goes to plan. But I see. at home, too. So, I mean, at home against Detroit, that's still a pretty good – like if you get boxed around by a Detroit offense that's not scoring right now, that's an issue uh, in itself. Let's take a quick second – some love for FanDuel, and then when we come back, we got a lot of ground to cover and not a lot of time, so uh, it's time to scoot. How do we do that to ourselves? <laughs> we always do it to ourselves, Dave Brown, because it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. How's that for a transition? Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets, guaranteed. You don't have to win. You can bet on the Twins tonight and still get $150 in bonus bets. Win or lose, bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet an automatic win. Boy, that's like facing the White Sox. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And speaking of the White Sox, Dave, I do want to go around the AL Central quick. Guardians put up three in the 11th, beat the Red Sox 10-7. They're 11-5 on the season, 8-2 and 
away from the Jake. I will always call it the Jake, so don't bother correcting me. Uh, Royals and White Sox postponed due to weather. I think weather won that one. And then uh, Tigers beat the Rangers 4-2, so they're 10-7 and on the season. So Twins, the only team in the division to lose. And the only team, as I said, in the affiliates that didn't lose is Cedar Rapids, who's Game against Wisconsin was postponed. St. Paul loses 10-6 to Indianapolis. Uh, they're seven and eight now. Diego, that Diego Castillo, the hitter, three for four. Deshaun Kiersey, two for five. Will Holland walked and homered and went two for three. But Randy Dobnak gave up five earned. And Josh Stalmont got boxed around for three earned in an inning and two thirds. Austin Schofer did have a scoreless inning in his return. Uh, last I saw, Wichita was down seven two. So things. We're not going great for them. I believe that has now gone. It's very close to final. It's 12-4. They're down to Tulsa. So things not going great there. Emmanuel Rodriguez, only two walks tonight, no home runs. So I guess he's not the kid who only hit homers. And Fort Myers loses 7-4 to Jupiter. But honestly, playing a team from another planet would probably be pretty difficult. So uh, Isaac Payne. Very gassy. Very gassy team. Yeah. Uh, he built just like me. Uh Anyway, uh, Twins. So Grayson Rodriguez, I, I don't want to say anything as far as like this offense that doesn't give credit to him for being really freaking good. Uh, it gives me vibes of like the exact picture that this Orioles team would have ruined 10 years ago or 15 years <laughs> ago. Like Radami's Liz. Uh, who was the Rodrigo Lopez was that like six, seven guy who had nasty stuff or even Jorge Lopez before. He was a reliever. You know, they, they had a lot of starters who went through there and were not very good. Uh, Jake Arrieta is probably the number one or Brian Mattis. I mean, I feel like we could be locked on Orioles with all this. But, um, boy, Grayson Rodriguez is, is going to be a dang good pitcher for a long time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it is one of those things, you know, you look for positives with the Twins and there aren't too many on the offensive side. But at the same time, you know, going up against a pitcher with the stuff of grace and Rodriguez, you're, you're not necessarily expecting too much either. So um, it's not, it's uh, it's hard to find uh, things to latch on to right now, as far as positives for the twins, especially on the offensive side. Yep. But at the same time, like I said before, you're playing the Orioles at a kind of a bad, it would be tough for the twins to go into Baltimore and win a series, even at full strength. The Orioles, you know, the winners of 100 games plus last year. And I kind of expect them to be a better team this year. So um, it's, you know, this is one where I think September, October, maybe the Twins have a better chance uh, than than right now. But certainly they're, they're not coming into the fight with all their weapons. That's That's for sure. I feel like what fans should be hoping for right now is – uh, whatever happens in the finale of the Orioles series happens, but you hope to have success against Detroit, White Sox, Angels, White Sox, and maybe go into May Day resetting. You know, just kind of if you can get to May with a, I don't know how many games that is. That's probably going to be like a, if you can be 15 and 15 or the, whatever the equivalent is going into May and basically say the season starts now. Uh, I think that's going to be the healthiest mindset. You know, you've got fans who are like, when are we going to trade Carlos Correa? Which is like, are you, are you serious? That's like, probably not a likely outcome. I would uh, say no trade clause and, you know, five more, four more years on his deal after this. You know, I don't think so. And plus it's only, I mean, get getting back to this, it's only April 16th. So yes. it's, it's, it's not like they're, they're about to have the AL central run away from them. Um, you know, they're not playing well and they're injured and they're banged up, but it is not so hopeless that it's time to start thinking about selling off the parts. And, and like you said, in the case of Correa, you're, you're not going to be able to do that anyway. So you know, yeah. he's not, he's not on the verge of going anywhere. Um, looking up and down the lineup, you know, Julian has, has run into some pitches uh, every now and then and hit home runs. He's not, I don't think the best version of himself yet. Um, you know, that, that's one guy I think that maybe uh, is going to get going. Jeffers has been solid. Karoloff has been pretty solid. Byron Buxton hasn't hit the ball hard yet. Uh, Larnick just got here. Miranda, there's some 
uh, you see some moments with him. Mm-hmm. Margo and Santana, uh, not really performing all that well so far. Um, th- there's a lot of guys that could be doing better than they are, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe not so much that we would expect them to be doing great, but I think, you know, is Margo a 189 hitter? Is Willie Castro a 111 hitter? Um, there's a lot of room for improvement among several guys in the lineup. And I hate to say it, but so for some of this, we just need to be patient. Those guys combined are hitting 300, though. That's something to. I don't think that's how that works. But no. uh, let's let's close with some love for Byron Buxton. Though he played his ass off tonight in the field. Um, you know what? It's just great to see him out there running again. Again, I I'm not trying to sell someone a a, a lemon or anything like that. But you know what? He looks the battle come. I really do think so. He tripled. You know that that alone is running around too. I'm still encouraged by that. I think the battle come as he heats up. I think they can heat up. I think they can get back to 500 by May 1st, and the season starts that day. You got to like how he's running the bases, like you said. You yeah. have to like how he's playing the field. And There's playing lots of every day. Yes. There, there are still lots of good signs with Buxton. You know, no, he he's not slugging over 600 right now. Um, let's give that a little more time. There, there are enough encouraging signs, though, with him that, uh, like you said, make it fun for us to watch him at mm-hmm. least run the bases and play the field. Th- those are a good indication of health. Hitting is about timing. Uh, and I don't think there's a, an injury issue here, so uh, let him get his timing going, and uh, hopefully he'll be on both sides of the ball or all three sides if you count base running as a separate thing. Mm-hmm. Um the kind of player that we think he can be. Well, Hey Dave, that's all we have time for. We want to thank everybody for hanging out at locked on twins or with us at locked on twins. Uh, We'll see you tomorrow night.